guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Welcome cross watchers. And for those of you who may be brand new to the channel, happy you landed here. This is Leo, channel mascot. His name is Leo, but he is a Gemini, so he's very vocal. Um, <laughs> he just gets very interested in what I'm doing and very jealous of my diverted attention. So we're going to hope that he doesn't protest too much. Anyway, I'm pulling from Healing Waters Oracle to activate the reading. Let's see what message you get. Are you interested in pulling the card today, sir? Yes? Okay, you did this for Scorpio, so I'll let you do it today. Do you have a preference? Sir? Excuse me, sir, would you like to pick a card? That one right there. The waterfall. Inner power. Unbridled confidence. How Capricornian of you. And claiming your place. This does feel very Capricornian, even if you're here as a cross-watcher. Claim the energy. The waterfall, inner power, yes. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I'm pulling from this deck is because we are moving up to the full moon in Pisces. So all that watery energy. And the full moons are always about release. But it's also, by Leo, um, going to be a lunar eclipse, a partial eclipse. And those are lunar eclipses are uh, south node eclipses. And the south node is also releasing the past. So I love that you're getting a little inner power card, um, a little unbridled confidence, because it does take a little confidence to kind of dredge things up from the past. Some things are difficult to look at and face again and prepare to release it. I'm doing the soul contract tarot spread today and for this whole series of readings. So I'll let you know what the placement of the cards means and then we'll go back around with the clarifiers, okay? Here we go for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. The nature of your karmic soul contract, sure, can be about life partnership and like, you know, the future, what you're building, what you wanna build, um, your main lesson, well, a lot of people are getting this two of swords, an important decision. You may be at a crossroads moment, um, but there's some kind of decision you have to make with regard to the, to the future of this connection. Um, if there is one, if this is the proper life partner for you, uh, what you're already aware of. Oh, wow. So Ace of Swords, you've been getting some, you're maybe an epiphany, maybe an aha moment, some truth that has been um, made visible to you or made clear to you. Shadow work still needed, maybe a little defensiveness, little resistance, or some sort of like this energy of your inner power, your unbridled confidence, something that you might need to do a little shadow work around to kind of step in for what you need to claim or what you need to push back on a little bit. Um, past healing you've already accomplished. Nice, because with the Knight of Wands, it could be that um, there may be some in and out nature to this connection, or there could be some part of this connection where you feel it's um, a little too impulsive at times, or your person might be, and so you've already accomplished some healing around that. Again, we'll get more details from the clarifiers. The final step of the healing journey here that will signal you're ready to either cut cords in this connection altogether, or that there's some healing in this this aspect of the contract that we're good and then you can step up to the next phase of the soul of this particular soul contract mm -hmm. so in other words kind of getting out of your own way right so when you're no longer you know stuck in a prison of your own making where you overthink of everything or you second guess yourself or you fall prey to self-limiting beliefs, um, right? Um, yeah, so Eight of Swords reversed when you kind of go, no, I have enough information. I have the insight. Uh, I've got the clarity now because this is your main lesson. And if you're already getting that, oh, I see, I see it now, 
then um, that final step where you kind of know your path forward um, will be that final step of the healing journey where you can now ascend to the next phase of the soul contract and what you need to work on next or cut the cords completely. Got it? Okay, here we go. I bought him this little cart, uh, uh, like a kitty carrier on wheels because I have a back problem. Um, and so he's, he's getting heavier. And I went out today for an appointment and I came back and it's over here, but it was all the way over here. So I don't know. We may see him scooch it all across the house, whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead and see um, the Ten of Pentacles with the Two of Swords. Page of Wands, a Strength card, Five of Wands. So what's happening here as I'm seeing it is there's tension or a conflict. Um, maybe this person may not be taking things as seriously um, as you feel. Right, like in order to kind of imagine a future, imagine life partnership, if that's the soul contract. And we're dealing here with Page of Wands energy, which is fine if that's, you know, where you want to be. But because I'm seeing the Five of Wands from the bottom of the deck, and for those of you who are new, you know, the bottom of the deck cards are what you can't see. So it's either in your psyche, right, an unconscious awareness, or it's playing out behind the scenes. I, Either way, you know, there's tension there that you might not be able to see clearly, or maybe you're starting to see clearly now. So you have this important decision to make. Is this person really someone that is likely to be invested in the long haul? Um, and the strength part is about how you um, gather up your strength, your courage, and your confidence to overcome that tension, overcome those arguments, overcome that disagreeable energy or that inner conflict. Okay, so that's the general energy that I'm seeing here for this particular soul contract that I'm reading about. If that is speaking to you, let's continue. What you're already aware of, Ace of Swords. Mm-hmm. Ten of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles. So the Nine of Pentacles underneath, this person sort of makes, well, I'm saying her because it's a feminine figure in the card, doesn't have to be a feminine, doesn't have to be a, a woman. Kind of makes her way through the, through the journey here on her own. So she represents the single person in the tarot. But she's confident and she's self-sufficient. She kind of, you know, she knows how to manifest her creature comfort. She's independent, she's autonomous, and she's okay with that. So that's on the bottom of the deck. But what you're seeing clearly now is, well, you know, in order to kind of envision this future, I gotta have an offer, right? Like I have to have this sort of, um, this, this Ace of Pentacles would represent the beginning. You step through that little archway and if you're looking visually, you go step through that little archway and you keep moving on the path and there's the archway as you get up close, right? So we go from the Ace where we begin and we land down the road in Ten of Pentacles bill. So it's like you're seeing, well, to get there, we, we got to start someplace. So sometimes the Ace of Pentacles is a new beginning, but in this case, it's looking like I, I need an offer. I need someone to either, you know, whatever it is, right? Say, yes, I see a future with you. Yes, let's be committed to one another. Or it's a put a ring on it kind of a card, right? Take me off the market, if that makes sense. So you're seeing this clearly, um, it's something you're already aware of, which is why your main lesson here is about making a clear decision um, about the nature of this connection and this person's readiness, willingness, interest in, 
availability for, however you want to say it, for that kind of a connection here in 3D. And I'm seeing a page of wands and something you've already accomplished involves a knight of wands. So if you're picking up what I'm laying down here, we're looking at a lot of impulse, a lot of passion on that other side. And what I'm looking at with you is almost all pentacles. Okay, very earthy, very solid, very um, grounded, very realistic, very practical, not living on the fly. Okay, so in your shadow work, <laughs> we do have in that unconscious awareness realm, the six of pentacles, another pentacle card, which is the mutual investment, the reciprocity, the equal give and take. We're both invested 100%, 100%. Um, so that's kind of something that is your, your goal, we could say. That's the agenda. Um, but there's some something here you may be struggling to take a stand for. And it is about the fairness, the balance, the, um, like, what's the truth here? I want, I, I, I need something that kind of comes in that feels balanced and harmonious and fair um, and equal. And this is also equal give and take. It's even more than equal give and take, but we'll, we'll start there. And then we also have the high priestess and the high priestess is about, you know, what's your intuition telling you? And I have a feeling that if you're at all struggling with stepping forward to claim what it is that you, you want or you need or you desire, because those are the words for wands, it may be because your intuition is letting you know that ugh, I don't think, yeah, I don't know that that's where I'm going to land if I speak up and I get shot down, or I don't hear what it is that I want to hear or need to hear. So that's your shadow work. <clears throat> that's your mission if you choose to accept it. So let's look at the past healing already accomplished. Okay, so somewhere at some point, um, and it could be within this connection, but it doesn't have to be. This is sort of like, as I've been telling everybody up till now, like the receipts, the evidence, something you've already healed, you've had success at. So maybe working through manifesting something that feels over the moon, right? I'm really manifesting this ton of cups, this sense of joy, bliss, nirvana, that happily ever after kind of, you know, the over the rainbow. And I got some uh, like knight in shining armor, sweep me up off my feet, grand gestures kind of energy, but it didn't really have the staying power. So I'm manifesting this, I get this, close, no cigar. But underneath the knight of swords, I have a feeling that you know, at some point you did speak up because we have this energy of the Knight of Swords, which is a clearing of the air or making sure you're understood or that you understand. And it was probably with regard to well, what's going on here. What's the agenda? So because I'm only pulling a certain number of cards, what I'm interpreting here is that you got real close to manifesting but it fell a little short but there was some measure of clearing things up so you could walk away with your dignity intact and some measure of healing around it so it wasn't an epic fail or disaster okay so those are the receipts that give you a little bit of a hint as to how to you know navigate your own shadow work here um, because what you're struggling with at this moment is you kind of have a sneaking intuitive hint or hit that you're not dealing with somebody who's got the vision of the kind of future that you you want okay and and you have yet not fully let this person 
see you step forward to make any kind of clear, I don't want to say demand, but unambiguous terms, right? Seven of Wands, like, nope, I'm not, I'm not interested in something light and frivolous and, you know, as my sister would say, cheap and cheerful. Nope, nope, I, I'm, in, I'm interested in something more long-term, more long-lasting. So that's why you really need to focus on that shadow work because you do have evidence that you can take that kind of stand and make yourself clear. And if it doesn't go the way you would like it to go, you're still standing tall and proud. So let's see this final step on the healing journey. Okay. So almost as if you release yourself from the overthinking, from the self-doubt, from second guessing, from self-limiting beliefs, um, the two of wands getting very clear about the paths before you and what you really want. This is sort of making the decision, right? And twos are always about choices, but this two is, is, is a thought process, okay? Um, the two of swords is, is more of a, um, I have a decision to make and I have to get clear about the motivation, right? about the meaning and the purpose of this decision and how best to proceed with making the decision. Here's my shadow work. How do I approach what's really important to say, right? How to lean in from a place of power and confidence. Got it? This too is about, okay, now that I got that, what do I want? Where do I, what path do I choose now? as I move forward on this journey, unencumbered by all the overthinking, okay? And it's like the message here is, and you've heard me say it before, well, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. You're just gonna put one foot in front of the other. You're gonna choose a path, which is most likely to get you closer to what you really want, and then you're going to set in motion, take the actions that will back up those intentions. You're gonna do the work. Okay, Eight of Pentacles. And it's also a message of um, that this connection will take work. That if, you know, if you're clear about what you want and this person has, you know, free will. And it may require that you both have to take one step at a time, one baby step at a time, and work through it step by step. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Cap. It's an interesting reading, um, not surprising. And so what I'm going to do is take it to the extended, and I want to see it you know, see what your person, I want to get inside their head a little bit, but from a different point of view, because if we're dealing with kind of page of wands, knight of wands, possibly that might not be them, but let's just say for giggles that this is somebody who's operating, operating more from the pleasure principle and impulse and passion instead of what you are looking for, which is, no, no, that's all fine and good, but like, I want some stability. And I want something that's going somewhere. Let's just start with that. So let's look at their perception of you, their feelings for you, um, their intentions toward you. How, what do they get from you? What do they receive from you? Um, their physical fulfillment level with regard to this connection. And if you're not um, in close proximity to each other, then it's more about the chemistry, right? And, and where's the whole thing going from their perspective? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do in the extended. The links to that are below. There are three ways to access the extended. You have option one, option two, option three. So when you scroll in the description box below, make sure you look at those options. And when you click a link, 
just take a hot minute to read about it so you know what you're what you're um, signing on for. If you're interested in a private reading, I do those too, and there's always a link that you have to scroll a little bit to, and it'll take you to my booking page and you can read about that. Um, I'm gonna give you the astrology, but before I do, if you've been enjoying the readings and they've confirmed something for you, they've spoken to your situation in an uncanny, you know, pretty accurate way, and you haven't yet done so, please subscribe below and give me the opportunity to stay on this platform and do the thing I love to do most, which is to bring these messages to those of you who are kind of at home scratching your head saying, what is happening? Because that's our energetic exchange. I bring you these messages for free. You click the button that says subscribe for free. And that's what we have going on here. The extendeds are an option. Private readings are an option. But what we're doing here together is um, my way of paying it forward and of serving. So I'm thanking you in advance. Okay, here we go. The strength card is Leo energy. The page of wands is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The, the pages are always all the, uh, all the um, elements. So Aries, Leo, Sag, Leo. We have some Virgo energy in our nine of pentacles. Justice is Libra. The high priestess is the moon, which rules the sign of Cancer. Um, the Knight of Wands is Sagittarius. The Magician is Mercury, which rules Virgo and Gemini. We got Gemini here in the Knight of Swords. And we have the Page of Pentacles is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. So that's what I have for you with the Waterfall, Inner Power, Unbridled Confidence, Claim Your Place. That's what this card is, Claiming Your Place. Mm-hmm. In this connection and for the future, you seek, desire, deserve. Yes. Gosh, I should title this reading, Claim Your Place. Mm -hmm. I'm headed to the extended. I'll see you there in a second. Bye for now.